Welcome. I was so excited to speak with you today that I went live a couple of minutes early, which is fine. This gives me time for those joining us live to trinkle in and also remind you of who I am and what we do here. My name is Perez Hilton, the queen of all media, the gossip gangster, the original influencer, and I am giving you hot topics on YouTube every weekday, Monday through Friday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. Let me update my live settings because I have set up membership here on this YouTube channel. And if you watch me regularly and enjoy what I do, then please consider becoming a member. Your support really helps. And I will switch the live chat to members only. That way, oh, hey, Shane Coyle, nice to see you. Uh, I will switch the live chat to members only so that those who support get to chat with me and tell me what topic that they want to be discussed or whatever. So please become a member if you can. If not, everybody can watch. Everybody can comment after the live stream is over. Everybody can like, everybody can share. And we've got a lot to talk about today. Taylor Swift. Real Housewives, Scientology, QAnon, Paris Hilton, Gypsy Rose Blanchard, and more. However, I, listen, I really appreciate your support on this platform. I work hard every day to be prepared, to deliver, to be entertaining and informative for you, and to not repeat myself. So... You might have seen earlier on YouTube, I posted a clip from my podcast. Booker and I had an emergency episode on Patreon earlier today about the new Taylor Swift album. So I don't want to repeat myself. I can mention quickly some things. Hey, Bianca. Hey, Ryan, if I didn't say that already. But I want to talk about some Taylor things that I didn't talk about on my Patreon show. So I just had a Red Bull. I am, I am ready and caffeinated for you all. I normally don't drink the regular Red Bull. I don't even drink Red Bull that much anymore. I used to every day, but my mom bought this for me for my recent trip to Los Angeles with my daughter for her birthday. And I have a cheat night tonight. So I you know, kind of already began the cheating. Anyways. Uh, the point of that is I am still so freaking exhausted from Los Angeles. I was going to go to bed early last night, but I had to listen to the new Taylor Swift album, which I wanted to. I was excited about it, but I really wasn't excited that it was like 18 songs long. Then all of a sudden, surprise, 15 more songs are... Maybe, maybe the math is wrong. The, the total number of songs on the Taylor Swift new album is 31. 31 new songs, over two hours of music. That is a lot to absorb. Even for like a hardcore fan, like, she's demanding a lot of time and attention and care from people. And I, ha I have the, the attention and the care, but I don't have the time. Like, Dua Lipa's releasing her album soon, and I think it's just 11 songs. Thank God. And to summarize briefly what I said on the Patreon, I don't want to repeat myself, so I'm just very brief. I like the album, but... It feels like a lot of the same. There's nothing that feels very inventive or different. And that's fine because I like the same. I like what she does, but it's not as good as some of her other stuff. And I think that it's bogged down by its sheer volume, you know? Had she just released the 13 
best songs, it would have been a very different experience, much more manageable and enjoyable. But 31 songs. I don't want to be a broken record because a lot of those 31 songs, a lot of them are good. I'm not saying they're bad, but they're good, right? And some are great. I wish it would have just been great, just the great songs. And actually, I'm curious, are any of you either watching live that are members or enjoying the replay, are you a hardcore Swifty? If so, are you bothered that she pulled the same stunt again that she did during Midnight's? Remember on Midnight's, just a year and a half ago, she released the album, and then a few hours later, surprise, there's a bonus edition with a lot more songs. Well, Taylor did the same this time, but even more songs. It's not a bonus edition with a lot more songs. It's a double album, 31 songs. And she did that to game the system. The more songs, the more streams, and the, the, the easier it is to go to number one and stay at number one. Oh, thank you for the kind words, Erna Betty. Mwah. You know, that's why it's a, it's a new trend, you know, like hip hop albums especially have so many songs and skits and things like that because it helps with streaming. But if you're one of those hardcore Swifties that pays and gives Taylor Swift money to buy vinyls, Erna, Oh no, there we go. Thank you, Erna. Bless you. If you are one of those hardcore Swifties who buys vinyls or buys CDs, because that's a new trend, people buying CDs, Taylor obviously knew she was going to release this as a double album ahead of time. She could have told everybody, hey, Nakia, ahead of time and sold the double album ahead of time. But no. People already spent their money on the single album vinyl and the single album CD. Now a lot of those people are going to buy the double, the same album, but with more music and spend even more money. It just seems a little, like I get it. Nobody is forcing these fans to buy it, but it seems a little tacky. Tacky's the perfect word. Like, you don't need that extra money, Taylor. You're already grossing so much on your tour. The biggest tour of all time, breaking all the records, making you billions of dollars. Hey, Calypso Kins. Oh my God, the beach, fun. It seemed tacky and greedy and lame and a manipulative and unnecessary. And I love Taylor Swift, okay? I love her. But let's go back to the music and something that I did not talk about on my Patreon emergency episode today. And that is, you know, when I was listening to it for the first time last night, hella tired, as I mentioned, and having to absorb 31 songs, it was hard to like let ev like I wasn't reading the lyrics as I was listening to the song I was just in bed listening to the songs and some of the things just went over my head or didn't absorb like this one lyric on the song that Kim Kardashian is mentioned in yes Calypso and if you had any doubt whatsoever that this song is about Kim Kardashian. Let me show you how, oh, how do I shoot? How do I type on this? Fudge. Oh God, I, I'm not, I can't type. Oh, that's annoying. How do I type with it horizontal? Let me see if I can find it. Oh, actually, I'll just show you on my Apple Music. Okay. 
if you had any doubt whatsoever who this song was about, look at how Taylor wrote the title of this song. Thank you, Amy. You see that? Thank you, Amy. You see what three letters are capitalized there in thank you, Amy? The K, the I, and the M. Thank you, Amy. K-I-M are capitalized. And in the song, she tells us that to protect the identity of her bully, she changed her name. Uh, hello, you didn't do a very good job of protecting her identity. Like you literally telegraphed who it's about. And listen, you know, like some people might think she went too hard against Kim. Like there's even a line that her mother, Taylor's mom is an angel. You know, something, something along those lines. Everybody knows my mom is an angel, but she wished you were dead. Oh God, I get it. Kim and Kanye put Taylor through hell. But putting that out into the universe, that's dark, heavy, gross energy. Saying that your mother wished she was dead? Ew. And it gets worse, my YouTube fam. That, listen, it's, it's a little gross or maybe a lot gross, but whatever. It's her experience, her truth. I'm fine with that. But, Erna, this is the one lyric that I find really problematic and shocking, to be honest. In Thank You, Amy, Taylor Swift sings, and one day your kid comes home singing a song that only us two is going to know is about you. This is about Northwest, Kim and Kanye's oldest child. She is just 10 or 11 years old. I know because she's just a few months younger than my son. And I, I believe you should leave kids out of grown-up drama. I'm shocked. I am surprised that Taylor went there. That's low. That's low. I thought Taylor was better than that. Obviously not. Backstory. Last year, Northwest made a video with Kim to Taylor Swift's Shake It Off song. So this is a reference to that. And one day, your kid comes home singing a song that only us two is going to know is about you. Meaning this song, this song, which is painting her mother out to be a horrible human being, a bully. Hey, Ananda. The Kim thing, whatevs, but the Northwest thing, ugh, I'm shocked. I'm shocked. I'm disappointed because I love Taylor. I do love how she stylized the title, you know, with the three capital letters, because actually as an OG Swifty, that reminds me of what she used to do back in the day. She used to write her booklets in code to her fans by capitalizing certain words. CC. Thank you, dear CC. What a brilliant way to start the weekend. Thank you all. Ow, shoot. Um, Taylor Swift was dragging Kim Kardashian's daughter into the mud uh, on her new album. So yeah, that was surprising and uncalled for. And, you know, I was also surprised at how hard Taylor went against Maddie Healy. He dumped you. Okay, girl, you're in your 30s. You're in your mid 30s. You're a grown ass woman. Stop responding like a child. 
I think she's 34. Let me see. She is 34 years old. She will be 35 in December. Taylor, you're not a teenager anymore. You were dumped. You were humiliated. You were embarrassed. It was only a month of your life. Better that it happened sooner into the relationship than later. At least you didn't waste six years of your life like you did with Joe Alwyn. Like she put Maddie Healy's addiction on blast, exposing to the world that Maddie Healy, a recovering addict, tried to buy pills off a friend of a friend. Was that her story to tell? Well, I guess so, but how does that, that, I don't know, when dealing with somebody's health, that's gross, that's gross. There, that's gross too. Like his sobriety is his responsibility, but exposing Maddie Healy for allegedly slipping up that could trigger even more of a slip up. That could trigger a really awful downward spiral. And no, Taylor Swift would not be responsible for that, but she clearly didn't, didn't wouldn't have helped. It wouldn't have made things better doing what she did. <sighs> there are some songs that I really like I do like the Kim song a lot, actually. I love the Florence song. I love the manuscript. I love the song uh, Goodbye London or Sorry London or something, the, the song about Joe Alwyn. I like um, the song to her dad about Maddie Healy, uh, Can You Blame Me or something like that. There, there are some good songs, just too many. And, and, and it's... It's trying too hard to sound like Lana Del Rey. You're not Lana Del Rey. <laughs> it's like a, a wannabe Lana Del Rey album. I don't even like Lana Del Rey anymore. I liked her first album, but... <sighs> she needs to no longer work with Jack Antonoff and Aaron Dressner. They are not serving her. I don't know what fallout or issue drama she had with Max Martin, but life is too short. Make peace with Max Martin. And I want Max Martin on your next record, okay? Maybe maybe Lana sang back up on some of the songs. Like she Taylor even tried to sound like Lana Del Rey on some of the songs. I'm like, since when does Taylor Swift sing this low? Like she used her lower register so much on this album. And I'm like, that sounds weird, but whatever. I do like the album, okay? It's not one of my favorites, but I like it. It's not her best. I mean, look at the first single, Fortnite. When you compare that to the, the last lead single, Antihero. Antihero is one of Taylor Swift's best songs. Fortnite, I also just don't love, I mean, I like the genre of bedroom pop. It's bedroom pop, but is that really the first single? It's me. Hi, I think I might start putting the light on. Let's see, let's see how the light looks. Sorry, my OCD. At tea time, everybody agrees. Okay, that's much better. Today's the first day that I have my, my, let me see what it looks like without my overhead on. Hold on. <laughs> okay, this is good. Or maybe the overhead too, what do you think? 
or just this? Just this or the overhead? This is option A. Look at option A, and I'm gonna show you option B in a second. Option A, option A. Now this is option B. Okay, option B. I think I like B better. B better? But that one thing there is driving me crazy. Maybe, whatever. We're sticking with B. <laughs> All right, that was a lot of Taylor Swift, but I'm happy to talk a little bit more if any of my members want me to chat some more Taylor Swift. We have more things to talk about though. Anything else? I was, I have to, my brain is a very powerful thing. <laughs> I have to shut it down at times because it just goes off racing. I was going to pick up my kids from school and I had just seen that video of the guy that set himself on fire earlier today outside of the federal courthouse in New York City where Donald Trump is standing trial. And then I found his Instagram account. And he's this conspiracy theorist. And I was browsing all of his posts and his manifestos. He's done a lot of writing, this dude. I mean, thankfully he didn't hurt anybody else, just himself. Last I checked, he's still alive, but at the Cornell Burn Center in New York City and suffering critical injuries. Can you imagine if that dude survives? He's, his life is gonna be miserable, like covered in the most intense burns. So, yeah, anyways, my, my brain went off up to the races thinking, what was this life, what was he like three years ago, six years ago, 10 years ago? How does somebody become a conspiracy theorist? What if one of my kids becomes a conspiracy theorist. I really need for academics to study, analyze, and share with us their findings of how this happens. Because not all conspiracy theorists, not all conspiracy theorists are uneducated. Not all are dumb. Some are highly educated and very bright. So how does that happen that a seemingly sane, smart person becomes a conspiracy theorist? A few weeks ago, I was on Megan McCain's podcast and she said that she thinks COVID, COVID is responsible for the explosion of conspiracy theories and people that believe them. And I've said this repeatedly that I think this is one of the problems that's most plaguing America. This wasn't the case 10 years ago, but I remembered before today's live, when thinking about this guy that set himself on fire earlier today, Ananda, that might have something to do with it, fear, and Donald Trump making things worse. So yeah, it, it, I looked online at QAnon and QAnon actually began in 2017. So after Trump was in office, but before the pandemic. And QAnon was very popular, shockingly. I don't even know what the hell Q QAnon is but I know enough to know it's not true and it's wackadoodle and they believe that this, I don't even know. It's so confusing and not true. Bananas. 
Speaking of craziness like that and bringing it back to pop culture, The Real Housewives of New York has a new cast member for the upcoming season, Rebecca Minkoff. Do any of you know who Rebecca Minkoff is? If you're a fashionista, that name might, might ring a bell because Rebecca Minkoff is a fashion designer. And she also happens to be a Scientologist. Not just a run-of-the-mill Scientologist, a hardcore Scientologist. She donates millions of dollars to the Church of Scientology. I can't stand Scientology. I don't support it. I don't support anyone associate. I, I mentioned this. I mentioned this yesterday. Didn't I talk about this yesterday? That Scientology told Tom Cruise, you either choose your daughter, Suri Cruise, or you choose us. She's a suppressive person. You can't be in her life if you're a member of the church. And he chose the Church of Scientology. It's a cult. And listen, yesterday I also spoke about how in the UK they're trying to ban smoking. I don't think they should ban Scientology. I believe that people have free will, but I don't believe that they should have tax exemption. They're not a church. They're a cult started by a science fiction writer just a couple of decades ago, okay? <sighs> so yeah, if I watched Real Housewives of New York, I'd be boycotting that. Don't watch. Don't watch. In lighter news, Gypsy Rose Blanchard has gotten another makeover. I showed you guys her new nose. And now the former felon has new teeth. Let me show you. This is what Gypsy Rose Blanchard used to look like with all of those, sil all that silver in her mouth. Now, look at that. Look at that. I'm sure that that's coming soon, Calypso. And it wouldn't surprise me if she gets on Ozempic too. She's probably just waiting for endorsement deals to get on a weight loss medication and waiting for the right plastic surgeon to give her the free this and free that. But you know what? I'm impressed. That's a pretty good job with her mouth, especially because I don't know if she has any real teeth or any of her own teeth. Because, you know, sadly, her teeth fell out because of malnutrition and the abuse that she suffered at the hands of her mother. So that's sad. But I'm not going to end things on that, okay? Let's talk about something positive for the cherry on top. I can't play you the song, copyright, but I can show you the pictures. Paris Hilton has finally unveiled photos of her five-month-old daughter, London, and she's adorable. Look at that, how cute. Paris had been very protective, not sharing any photos of her daughter prior to today. And now we get a few photos. Look at that. Oh, how cute. So sweet. Oh, brother and sister, how cute. What a beautiful baby. What a blessing. And smart, strategic, clever marketing. She released these photos today because Paris has a new song out with Sia. This is not a joke. Sia released a song with Paris Hilton. The song is called Fame Won't Love You. Fame Won't Love You. And Paris can't really sing, but she's trying. And she doesn't sound good, but she doesn't sound bad either. I'm being very honest. It's clear that she's trying and it's clear that Sia coached her. 
and told her exactly how to sing, and Paris gave her best effort. So, congrats. All right, my fram. Do any of my members have um, any parting shots? Anything you want me to talk about? Any questions, comments, concerns, observations, critiques? suggestions, anything. This is your time. And I want to thank all of my members for the bottom of my heart. You all know I keep it real. You could see how many views my videos get. Not a lot. I'm not in Mr. Beast territory. And if you want to monetize on YouTube, you either have to get crazy views or do the subscriber model like I have with my membership on this channel. So everybody watching now or enjoying the replay, if you can, please consider becoming a member. Your support and that model really helps truly. Because come on, I wouldn't be streaming live on YouTube every weekday unless daddy needed to work hard and earn for his three children and my mother that I also support. So I'm a hustler. I take this seriously. I take you seriously. I understand it's $5. If you can't afford it now, maybe at some point in the future, or just watch every day, 7.30 p.m. Eastern, 4.30 Pacific, Monday through Friday. It's free to watch. It's free to comment when the live stream is over. It's free to like, and it's free to share. So stay beautiful. I love you. I mean it. I'll see you guys Monday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. Have a beautiful weekend. You deserve it.